Welcome once again to my channel, everyone. I'm your host today, and I will be taking you through the ancient ruins of Pompeii in Italy. This fascinating historical site will be told with the assistance of our tour guide. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and drop your comment below. Thank you. Some of them are even showing bones, like skulls and bones. Um, most of the time, when the skull is, uh, you know, very visible, and uh, the body has a, like a, a sort of a leather belt or something thicker, like a leather belt, that was a slave. That's one of the signs to recognize slaves. When you see the skull, it's because it was like me, bald or shaved. Oh. The slaves had two. So there was no thickness at the time of the dead to create actually uh, a space, okay. a void, where the plaster would have actually created, cool. you know, the plaster coating the skull. Those are all elements that you need to know for reading. <laughs> so when you look at something, you need to read, you need to interpret it. So those are some of them. Most of them have been actually sent to the hospital. I'm not teasing you. Before the restorations, they were sent to the hospital for the X-ray. Because we had rumors about some of them being restored in the late 1800 and added with part of the bodies which were not existing. There's one in particular, I don't know if they place it here because they had to move from the forum looking like a praying and for about two centuries we've been telling people i mean the guy that was maybe trying to cover his nose and his oh. mouth trying to breathe but the x-ray told us that that plaster cast actually is without the upper limb no arms it was the restorer of the time 
who was like say mamma mia what a shame i mean i feel really bad for him let's put the two arms but actually the arms are much smaller it's from the elbow to the hand and so that was the rumors and then eventually when they permitted to make the x-ray we sent them to the hospital of pompeii and we learned also some of them we retained to be girls and they were boys and vice versa for another one we thought it was a pregnant slave she was not pregnant at all but she had the disease like you know now exactly yeah. I, i feel like really really actually you know, bad i need to run to the toilet and i start producing more gases okay so when she died she was looking like being pregnant but she was not so we are making now all those searches on the plaster cast mainly dna now eventually we enter no steep road so kindly follow me uh the first actually to visit if it's open i would like you to follow me to the gymnasium i got all of the maps so if you don't mind help me distribute all of them i got for all of it but in the meantime let's walk please i have one i have it very welcome not in Pompeii I want you to have a full immersion you're very welcome and the other area in the fields uh, in the Pomerium area of Pompeii. We are still outside the walls. Look, on the southern side of the town, they built three rings of walls. One is still visible. See the second line? It, it looks like a meadow. Then you see stones, and then there is another wall. So three rings of walls for protecting the southern area, which was the easiest one to be attacked by catapults, for example. We have found all the missiles on the other side. Some of the missiles are in an Italian little museum. I was doing like this, I will look like a Pope, because it has been a long time we haven't seen. Uh, two and a half years of pandemic, it has been a disaster for all the guys. So we are not going to enter through the, the official game best engineers to study the soil the land so on the southern eastern area of the town using part of the city walls you see the lowest part through the gray wall then the lowest part has the same color of the stones okay instead of building the amphitheater they start digging the amphitheater being these at 90 feet above the ancient sea level You need to consider the meter down there, not this level. They start digging a no shade open quarry. And with the materials they did quarry from there, they built the upper ring, the analemma esterno, the outer analemma, like anulare, ring finger, that's the meaning, anulare, of the amphitheater. So that's the oldest stone amphitheater ever built in the Roman world. The oldest? a century older than the Colosseum in Rome. Wow. Wow. It has no underground areas. When we get the arena, arena, the stage, we won't find the sand that they used to go with. We don't see the openings because they dug 25 feet from this level, the level actually where the people are, to the lava. The lava was, the prehistoric lava was very, very hard was a dark lava and red lava which is called Kruma. Let's cross this bridge. Thank you God that the new manager decided to reopen this bridge. Otherwise we could not enter here. And now I will tell you the name of the amphitheater. Because if I keep on telling you the oldest stone amphitheater, I will be making a mistake. <laughs> You will also find a marble slab, which will say Spectacula. So Spectacle was the name of that kind of public building. We are now at the, at the highest part, but still outside the city wall. Uh, that was a watch tower there, added to the previous city wall. So when the Romans came here, they built the watch towers. And you can tell where the watch towers actually used to be. 
according to the difference of the building material. My motto is uh, you are a fine new in Naples, let's say, because before the pandemic my motto was let's walk all around the city. If we see a door open, we enter and then we argue. Because if you ask, is it, is it possible to enter? Say no, before you ask. So my trick was to enter open doors of churches without asking anything and then eventually to argue with the people inside. So the door is open, nobody will be arguing with us today. We are going to enter the gymnasium, the largest gymnasium, extremely important public building of the town. What is that? Because I want, once you enter, to look at me on the other side of those curtains, because otherwise we miss something extremely important. When you look through as you are doing, kindly notice on the ground, just next to the plane trees, you find some concrete spots. Zero on one side, five meters, fifteen feet on the other. Those are some of the original charts, carbonized for the food. Hazelnuts, figs, walnuts, pomegranate, pomegranate, here. I do repeat, do you see my hand? Melo granada, pomegranate, granada. Why I'm insisting in repeating this word? It is thanking to the pomegranate, pomegranate that we have in the cellar, that we understood, we learned, the discussion on the Zubio didn't take place in August, the 24th, 79th, October. Because Melograni, Granada, Spongren, and the huge quantity of a kind of big crown in the cellar was telling us that actually had to be a different month. In August, we don't have harvest grape. And we also have found a map of tons of grapes that could not be the year before because the skins and the stems were used as a fuel. And so during the winter, they would have actually used all, all of them, but they were heap of those actually materials. Now you kindly follow me. If you like to buy a fresh lot of bread, that's what you're thinking for the pots. There were three caps, in a few words. But the meaning is that much more important if we start thinking about you were able to find those char carbonized lots of bread where? In the ovens of the bakeries. And what it means, they had no idea about the volcano, about the mountain to be about to wake up. They were just baking, they were doing all the daily activities. This is important to know. Uh, most of you already been with me on the tour Sorrento of the Amalfi Coast. And we were driving, leaving the Autostrada, and am I telling you, the train station was built where there was a villa, and the frescoes we took from there, and we brought to the gymnasium. 
on synthetic boards like uh, artificial honey bee combs and to make walls open like this. Before appreciating the perspective, you need to use your imagination, closing the walls and making it to the rooms like this. Is it clear? Are you ready? The central room was a disaster. The two side room, unbelievable. The perspective is like a modern perspective. Where we get you know, the roofs, the ceilings, the porticos on the other side, those are beautiful actually mythological creatures like the statues on those pillars, scary masks. Look at the masks. Look at the scary masks. Look. See how many we have. This is not very visible, but there was another mask here. Why? Because even if there are fake openings, the evil eye doesn't care. We'll be entering. And we want to stop the evil eye. Um, maybe if you kindly step here, we have another lady who would like that to, to pass through. Thank you. Thank you. I'm like an invader. I want to stick to the story. Okay, she has another acting with a big mask in the corner. Look at the coffered ceiling and the landscape, tiny little paintings. This is the central room. This is the replica of the villa. With the three main rooms, we took the frescoes from it. Now it is a training station. It's called the Moreci. One stop mark of the day. It was a lot of the river. We don't have the river anymore. Running and getting the position on the floor of the Monday. We find out there's nothing to long as one from here. We don't have the same anymore. So that was the reason. And the central room was the one. One is mortal, will be living forever, the other one actually will be dying. So one of the brothers will be sacrificing part of his life to have his brother to live forever. That's the meaning. And the third and last room decoration is right here. So it's nice because on the display, you can see some actually have the tool, it's a blue hide actually. When they were digging with the part, digging, removing the material, the huge quantity. They didn't know where to put, so they were putting on the side, so they were in game, why? And then eventually, in 1939, they were able to go out there. The first one was the second one in the world, and uh, one track was built, they were here all the way along the sea, discarding all the material of the sea, so in this way they could be playing more lines on the sea. This is unbelievable. I was telling you before that the town, the ancient town, and also the modern one, has to do with the river. The river is a, a divinity. It's not the major divinity of the Olympus, but this river is important. Think about the Tiber River. The Tiber River would be represented like an old guy like me, longer mustache, along the water, 
with a crest coat of arm representing the town it does represent. So maybe she will for the two babies. Here we have an old guy with a bronze gilded of the jar, look, which is pouring water to feed the river. So that's the Sarno River, along which the town was built in ancient times when it was in this water. And on the other side, still the river is flowing. It did after it was diverted by the pyroclastic material. Don't say lava, because we have no lava in this area. If we had lava, we could not visit anyway. Beautiful. These mythological creatures holding, carrying a gold tripod. I'm quite sure it does represent something belonging to Apollo. Because Apollo's temple, okay, had a, a big stone signifying actually the omphalos, the belly bottom of the world. A meteorite landed actually, and they shrined all around. And the Pizia, so the priestess of the Temple of Apollo, was a sitting right at the top of the tripod to foretell the future. In a strange way, broken sentences. It will be the Sibyl. Um, few original items, always from Origine. They don't want to waste space. To the kulina, which means kitchen, nowadays kulina would mean a different thing, but kitchen in ancient times kulina, they had the tiny little shelves and they don't want to waste any space. So the glass containers would be squared. So to be put one next to the other. Those are keys, the number eight are keys. Those are hinges for doors. And see the quality of the glass. Oh, sorry. This is only one. If you like to see the best of the set of glasses ever found in Pompeii, are you ready? Okay, buy a ticket, Ryanair or EasyJet, fly to the British Museum. <laughs> the best of the best, because uh, uh, William Ackley uh, Hamilton was the ambassador in Naples, the closest friend of the king, and he was permitted to dig and to take to Okay, one of the big fairy rocks, so in between France and England, we have the majority of those islands under the ocean, under the water. Beautiful glass, anyhow. This is the Let's see. That's a man, right? Let's have because actually this was part of the decoration of the fountain. So the lead pipe actually was seen in the fountain. They didn't suffer lead poisoning. Maybe you already know because you were with me on other tours because the inner part of the lead pipe naturally was coated by the lime scale, the calcium, which was a precipitate, it was leaving the water when running show. So in this way, they didn't know anything about, they didn't suffer the lead poisoning, but they were suffering, as we do, kidney stones. <laughs> we are maybe also, that's another search we're making on those uh, uh, let's say plaster cast the bones or whatever after is left. The decoration is like ivy. This would be actually a beautiful open dining space. And uh, let me tell you, because uh, it will be the beginning of April, that means will be housing a beautiful actually remains, a beautiful archaeological finding from the villas up on the mountain. The one that we do visit when they do the pasta factory. I went to check because as they call us every couple of weeks to upgrade actually the history or whatever. Yeah. It's mandatory for us. And so many items, unknown ones. I'll tell you a tiny little info, which is very nice. For me, it was the only new stuff. All the villas, the IPs people, they had private stuff. To make some money, those already rich people, were opening the back doors, and there was like a counter, a ticket office, and they had found char, carbonite, a wooden box with the money they cashed the day. So they were actually permitting other people to use their actually private spa. I say spa because up there we have hot springs of water. That's the richest area of Campania as far as hot springs of water. That's why the pasta factories are up there. You know, they need a lot of water yeah. for producing pasta.
Any question? You are scared about the answer. That might be too long. <laughs> Let's go to the spectacular. The amphitheater. built in the meantime to support the vault. If the bricks are worn out, is the original one. If the bricks that look like brand new, are brand new. <laughs> Here's the restoration of the restoration. And now I'll give you an info that you might not trust and you might not like. The entire area is on the way to Salerno. So in 1943, this area was all burnt. So Pompeii, it only was built by Mount Vesuvius was destroyed by the earthquake but was also destroyed by the bombing on the way and the last destruction of Mount of the ugly you know, Pompeii is 1980 the earthquake again so we keep on rebuilding we keep on rebuilding what we see is what they were trying to rebuild from 62 to 79 let's use this oh it was not a lot it was strictly for reason by the AD, engineers in front of the he used those arches to another, it's not a taboo in time, to pipi in the corner, they were punished, or for street vendors during raining days to take a refuge unless they were permitted to do that. I, I try to imagine actually because uh, we have found a fresco depicting this amphitheater. During the riot thing, oh, Pompeii people and Nocera people next town. Nero was here and he did close this for 10 years. But as usually, you ladies are very powerful. <laughs> Nero fell in love with a lady from Pompeii, Poppia. Uh, he didn't get divorced from the first wife, he was doing just like this, <laughs> killing her. He got married with uh, Popea, and Popea convinced, because Pom Popea was from the Popidis family from Pompeii, convinced him to reopen the amphitheater. The amphitheater has always been like uh, the modern football stadium. So Naples could not survive without the football stadium. Can you imagine like, Neapolitan people without a football stadium? No way. The same in ancient times for the amphitheater. We have Thank you. Another gate was here, so if you like to reach your seats, you need to go left or right. I'm telling you, as you were actually, you know, the spectators of the time, you got token, there is a number on, you know, that's a partition stone, so there would be a line, so dividing the arena into three main sections. The lowest one is for the VIPs, best view, best acoustics, but anyhow, this building was built like a theater, double theater, amphitheater, with unbelievable acoustics. I would be proving this. I don't mind about my colleagues what they are going to say. 
Now we, you pass is a strong door. There's a strong thick gate here. You pass it. There's another one right here. We are right at the arena. Right now, we are crossing the old trade arena. If you notice, most of the time at the low range you will find lectures, sentences, names. Sometimes there are the names of the people who are to sit there. Sometimes they are just a deep deep below to be known by them. The amphitheater, when, oh, sorry, when it was first dug, still had all the decorations. Who was with me at the archaeological museum? You. Do you remember those frescoes? The oval shaped ring, actually. And they were all here. All the walls were all frescoed. Beautiful. But the storm made actually all the frescoes to collapse down. Thanking God, they were all destroyed. But thanking God, there was actually an artist who made the drawings of them. And we have the original ones at the Archaeological Museum of Naples. Um, right now, still at the temporary, unfortunately, exhibit about gladiatori, gladiators. We are, you are a gladiator, you are a gladiatrix, because they're both of women. You don't need to renounce your Roman citizenship. He's a Roman, if he likes to become a gladiator, he has to say for two years minimum, I do renounce to my papers. Roman citizens are not allowed to become gladiators. I'm a talent scout, I found him on the war battlefield. I'm a Lanista, I say he will become a good actor, Reziario, so with the net and the fourth, the A4, okay? So, but you see, you will become a Murmillone, which should become a beautiful helmet, will be protecting his eyes with two tiny little doors and a grade. <laughs> I'm not teasing you, if you go now to the Archaeological Museum, the helmets are right there. How long is that exhibit open to you now? Until the end of this month. I hope oh, they make an extension of, but kindly follow me. Those are the original step seats. Each one, okay, this is maybe the best. Look, if you can only come back here, because you can see, uh, focus on that one, where you see the space with actually the vomitoria. Ah. The openings, <laughs> the windows, the spaces to walk in were called vomitoria, because the Latin is a very logical language. If it looks like mouth vomiting out people, we do call vomitoria. Next to the vomitoria, on the left, you notice that the step is higher on the front side and lower on the back side. Two technical reasons. My feet, I'm sitting behind you. My feet will be setting in my feet rest space. When it's raining, it would be collecting the rainwater. And we don't get the words. Plus, now we need more imagination. We need another little bit higher ring. See, you make it those beautifully the walk a little bit higher. You have big stones on the other part, lava, with the squared holes. You put poles inside, ropes, all the sails from the fleet, and so during the sun shining days, they were pulling them down to create the awnings protecting spectators. Velarium. How we learn all this? Through the fresco that we have found in one of the houses of Pompeii, showing the rioting in between Nocera people and Pompeii people, and showing also those waving stuffs. At first, we didn't understand what they were for. So far, I could not actually give you uh, the proof that the acoustics here are the best one. Follow me. Uh, have you ever seen a movie about the Roman time? 